Do you ever tell a lie? Maybe withhold information that somebody else needs or quite possibly you catch yourself avoiding something in a conversation and you're not really being honest with someone when they ask for your opinion. There's a lot of reasons why we lie in our lifetime <laughs> and most of us do it at some point throughout our day every day. It's kind of ingrained in who we are and it doesn't have to be a big giant lie. Well, sometimes lying is a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to tell the difference. This is Zen in a Moment. It's a podcast where you can learn to train your brain to stop stressing forever and be the cool, awesome, fabulous person you know you can be. I provide tips and strategies that move you from stressed out to in the flow. Flow meaning feeling light, open and wise. And I am your host, Zen Cryer DeBrook, stress as guidance expert. I know for me, lying is a thing, and I am very comfortable admitting that because I don't see lying in the way that we traditionally see it in maybe a biblical or a integrity situation. I mean, lying can be as simple as somebody asking your opinion on something and you withholding your real opinion. Uh, lying can also be when you're avoiding a situation with someone and acting as if everything's okay, and it's not. It's really not. You need to be having a conversation to clear something. Maybe it's with your spouse or with your kids or with a coworker, and you're avoiding it and not doing it and acting as if everything's okay. That is a form of a lie. And most of us do this, and the reason why is generally there's an underlying experience of fear. We're afraid of hurting someone's feelings, or we're afraid of rocking the boat, creating challenges and problems and difficulties. Or maybe it's a relationship around timing. You know, you, it's, you just can't seem to find the right time to bring up this conversation. And so here's the thing. These little moments where we withhold, we avoid, we um, aren't completely honest because of a seed of fear in our experience is keeping us away from deep levels of intimacy and authenticity in our lives. And it creates this sensation in our body of closing. Fear is closing, right? And, and, and fear as a closing experience keeps people away from us. Now, if you don't know what I mean by closing, I'm talking about your internal guidance system. You can go to zeninamoment.com if you haven't yet and check out the video there on feeling your internal guidance system. It's a factory installed guidance system in your body that you can feel throughout your day, letting you know if what you're thinking is on target and in alignment with creating happiness and success in your life or not. I'm not going to go over that here, but if you've been listening to this podcast, you're probably, we have already felt it. And here's the thing, that closing sensation of fear, okay, is letting us know that what we're thinking, the avoidance or the lack of timing, right, is, is not appropriate. Like this thing that we should be discussing, that we should not be avoiding, that we should be honest about, okay, when we feel that tight, sick feeling in your stomach or tightness in your chest or lump in your throat, that's closing. When you feel that as you're avoiding something uh, and not being completely fully truthful and authentic, uh, authentic, what that means is, is that you are being called to be authentic in that moment. You're called to be honest. You're called to tell the truth. You're called to take the time and face the difficulty. And the, here's the thing. When you do, it will work out for the best. When you do, it will work out for the best. Because what will happen is, is you'll open. You'll, you'll, when you actually think, wait, I'm closed at thinking of not talking to this person about this difficult issue, I'm feeling this anxiety, that means that you are actually intended to talk about the issue with this person. And in holding that thought, you'll get an expansion or an opening or a release. That means that that conversation, that thing, needs to be said in order for you to have a greater level of happiness and success. All right? The other thing is, is that you may actually have a wanting to be saying something to be truthful, but you're closed. Meaning that that thing that you're about to say or do in that moment will create disharmony, will create dissatisfaction, will create a lack of success in your life. There are times when we have emotional experience where we really want to tell somebody off or share with them how we feel or we feel like th there's a drama happening inside of us and we need to change someone's behavior. Maybe we feel like we need to lay down an ultimatum or, or stand up for ourselves in a way that isn't quite healthy, you know? And in that moment, you're closed. You're thinking about moving forward 
with that truth that you're going to share and you're closed. Well, generally what that means is that truth that you're going to share is not coming from an honest place. It's not coming from a place of integrity. It could be coming from a place of wanting to hurt the person or wanting to um, share your dysfunction in a way that is going to leave them hurt and, and feeling disconnected from you. Your internal guidance system is a perfect way to assess if the situation and you being honest in it is going to be ex received and healthy and bring you closer, or if it's going to be not received, it's not healthy, and it's not going to bring you closer to that person. So an example of this is there was a time when I had a friend who had repeatedly um, taken advantage of me. <laughs> this person, um, I would work really hard for them, and they did not appreciate it, and there was all kinds of things going on that were really, uh, really off and really wrong, and I'm somebody who doesn't like conflict. I just, I really just don't like conflict, but I kept getting an, a feeling when I would tell him off in my head, <laughs> I would get an opening at the things that I was thinking about saying, and I recognized that I was getting an opening, and I know I needed to have this conversation, I knew I needed to have this conversation, but the problem was is that I couldn't seem to get the courage up. And every time I thought that I, I could just get away with not expressing these issues, I closed. So finally, I got my courage together and called him up and had a conversation about the situation and all the ways in which I was going to end the friendship because of X, Y, and Z, all these reasons. He did get incredibly upset. He did scream and yell back at me and say all kinds of mean things to me. And the conflict was difficult and challenging and ugly. And then we got off the phone and he stated that he was going to go to everybody in the community that we were f jointly friends in and say bad things about me. And all my worst fears were coming true. However, whenever I would hold the thought after the, after the conversation happened that I had made a mistake, that that was the wrong thing to do, I would close. And whenever I would reverse my thinking and think, wow, okay, I was supposed to have that conversation even though it was really hard and didn't turn out well, I would open. My internal guidance system would open. And so about two weeks after this had occurred, the person called me up again and actually thanked me because as he ran around and said bad things to people about me, they all agreed with me in my assessment of <laughs> him and his horrible friendship. <laughs> he's not how he's not a very good friend and he was quite selfish and demanding and didn't give much in return for that level of friendship that people were giving him and that, that uh, I was right. The point is, is not that I was right, but that my internal guidance system led me to do the right thing. It was the right thing to let this person know. And they thanked me because they said everybody was getting pretty sick of him and he needed to know that and he was going to cl clear things up and change his behavior. That he, he hadn't realized he was rubbing people the wrong way. That's one example. Another example is, you know, with my spouse, he'll have an ongoing issue some challenge, maybe it's with his health or a frustration at work or something's happening, right? And I feel like I have a solution, a way of handling it or a way of being with it. But every time I'll go to share it with him, I'll close. Maybe it's him changing his behavior or thinking of it in a different way. But when I go to share it, I feel closed. And when I think about he can work it out on his own, I open. And so I've had many conversations where I'm on the listening end and the, you know, with my husband and there's something going on and it's not my place to say or do anything about it. I'm just there to listen. And when he asks my opinion, my opinion is, honey, I know you're working out. Now I have other opinions, but I'm not being guided through my divine internal guidance system to share them. It would create a lack of intimacy it would create a lack of him sharing with me his true feelings and what's going on for him. He would possibly feel judged or maybe he would feel as if um, he's not being supported fully in the situation that he's in. So there's two examples of, of a way in which, yes, truth is important, but truth is not as important as being div divinely and intimately a part of someone's life and connected and knowing what your place is at each and every mo turn and in the relationship, where to contribute and where to not. And 
So I encourage you to, before you share with someone and before you, you know, get, judge yourself um, as being a coward, <laughs> afraid of conflict and wanting to run away, stop and check in with your internal guidance system. Stop and really have that conscious moment. Does this feel opening or does this feel closing in this moment? What I'm about to share, how I'm about to express myself. All right. I want to thank you so much. Please, please, please share this podcast. It means so much to me. Forward it on to people who you think might enjoy it. I really appreciate it. Please comment below. Tell me what you think about this topic as well as places in your life where maybe you have a few white lies going on to protect yourself or others. I want to hear about it. And I look forward to having you listen to this podcast again. There's two a week, one on Monday and Thursday. If you want to get them delivered to your inbox, go to zeninamoment.com and sign up for my email list, zeninamoment.com. You'll get all kinds of yummy, juicy, amazing offers, as well as additional content and courses and invitations to come and talk to me in complimentary uh, coaching calls and things of that nature. I would love to have you more engaged with me. All right, until we get to be together again, I am sending you love and blessings.